Hi guys, uh, my name is Ian and welcome to my channel. So this video will be on part 2 of the X5 build. If you haven't seen part 1, you can just check in my link and um, see part 1. And I'll put a quick recap as well. If you guys recall in the video, um, I actually had to get the car towed away. And that's because it wouldn't start. I used that to negotiate with the owner and managed to get a discount. Um, and if you recall as well, I had a... Um, I was charging the battery. Trying to see if that would help start the car. So this video will just cover that aspect and um, figuring out how to start the X5. Hope you guys enjoy the video. So this is the checklist we'll be using to troubleshoot the X5. We'll be checking through the voltage, checking through the fuel, and then checking through the ignition. First up, you need to know where the battery terminals are. So in the X5, it's in the engine bay, and you can see in that um, on the right, or to the driver's passenger side, the red cap here, this is the positive terminal. And the negative or the ground, you can use any bolt that connects to the chassis. So here, this is struct one, and then this is the, a bolt connecting to the chassis where you can actually uh, charge the car or kickstart the car. Um, put jumping cables here to kickstart the car. I just want to show you guys the battery in the boot as well. So most of the new cars have it in the boot. And with the X5, there is a panel here that you need to remove. So this panel is held on by three screws. So there is one, uh, two of them to the left. And then there's also one to the right of the car. So once you remove those, you can just pull it aside and you get access to the battery. So guys, just be wary. Look at the rating. So I had, I have had to change this one here. So it's now a 105 amp hour battery. The previous owner had a 95 amp hour, which caused a lot of problems as well. So guys, just a warning with the battery. Um, if your car has a specific battery rating, don't allow any of the other sensors to change the battery rating and say it'll actually be okay for your car. If you use a lower amp hour battery, you'll end up having voltage issues in your car and initially it'll run fine, but after a few months of always constantly getting low voltage, you'll have electronic failure. And most of the cars nowadays from the 90s upwards uh, or early 2000s upwards, they all use a lot of electronics and especially with BMWs obviously is a lot of electronics and those will fail over time. So there's a few extra bucks that you saved initially will end up costing you a lot in the future when more electronics fail. And most of the time these, these electronics are located deep inside. So there's a lot of stripping involved. So don't cheap out, just rather get the appropriate size battery, uh, battery rating for your car. So now we're going to go and check the voltage of the car um, and I've got the multimeter up here in the front. So you just need to set the multimeter to read up to 20 volts um, like so. And we're going to use the same two terminals um, to measure the voltage. So obviously the positive goes up to the red and the negative is going into a, a ground point or negative which is on the... I'll be using the strut struck bolt was my wire that wire for my multimeter is quite short as you can see it's reading more than 12 so as long as it's more than 12 the car should be able to start the battery is adequate for the car to start hi guys um i was editing my video last night and i thought of something that I need to tell you guys I need to make a disclaimer so um, the videos that I'm making are um, based on what I've read about these, these cars and I just want you guys to know that I'm not a professional I've got a full-time job and 
this is just a hobby that I enjoy doing. Um, so whatever I've read and learned about is things that I've, I'm trying out and works for me. So it doesn't mean that it will work for you. So just be careful if you want to work in your car, um, just be safe and please don't blame me for if you break anything. Um, yeah, so just with regards to me working in the car. So what happened when I was editing the videos, I realized the mistakes that I made. So I just want to make sure that you have pointed them out and how I corrected it. I left it in just so we can all have a laugh and learn from my mistakes. And in fact, I'll eventually make a video of all the costly errors that I've made and hopefully you guys will learn from it and not make the same errors that I've done. So also, you'll notice with the edits, so even though my videos end up being less than 10 minutes, it takes a lot longer for me to actually figure out what's going on with the car. So some some faults may take one day to fix and some may take weeks to fix. Either I have to wait for parts or I have to wait for tools. So um, you'll see that there's different lighting and I've obviously recorded at different times and I've edited it to make it all flow nicely. So I hope you guys understand and don't grill me in the comment section um, for the different lighting or different angles. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for watching. Getting back to the video, we're going to check um, for the fuel. So I pretty much checked for the continuity of the fuel lines running from the back to the front of the car. And here you can see the fuel uh, filter and we'll just check that there's no obvious leaks uh, around. Second thing we'll check is the fuel pump that it primes. So to get it to prime, usually you, when you unlock the car, you'll hear sound coming from the rear of the car underneath the seat. Um, it'll have, have a, a buzzing sound. Or you can um, put the key in the ignition and press ignition on and you should hear a buzzing sound as you heard just now. Now that we're done with the fuel and the voltage, we're going to check the ignition next. So we're going to go and just put the key in the ignition and um, check that there's actually power coming in and there's nothing immobilizing the, the car in any way. And as you can see, we've got ignition. So now that our checklist is complete, um, we should be able to start the car. So to start the car, um, we just put the key in the, in the uh, ignition and put our foot on the brake and then press the start button. As you can see, we've got, we've got ignition, foot on the brakes, and then you can press start. But as many times as I tried, it still doesn't want to start. So the weird thing is I don't hear any start motor cranking or any attempt from the start motor. Now with the E90 platform, this is located in the engine bay and it's what I'm used to. So this is one of the mistakes that I've made. I tried looking for it um, on the top of the engine. It looked a bit tight and it didn't look likely, but I, I said it has to be here because I've only worked in the E90 before. So that's where I'd originally looked in this area. Um, just behind there on the top. So the next thing to try is just to remove the panels and um, take a look and see if it is actually there. So this is just the engine cover and then I'm removing the air filter to the, this is the diesel air filter. Just pop out these two vents and then it comes right off. So it's quite a simple process. Um, but it just still, it's just looking, it's all cl uh, clustered in there. So not sure if this, this starter mode will actually be, be down there or, and so I did some, after looking here, I just Googled it on and saw that actually with this car, with the E70 series um, or the X5, the starter mode is actually at the bottom of the car going or by, the, by the gearbox instead of on the top. And here you can see there's the starter motor and as you can see around it there's quite a bit of oil around it. It's the two terminals that go to it. Um, I'm assuming one is positive and one is ground but you guys can comment in the section below. I'm sure you, some of you guys are more experienced and you know exactly what this is but this cabling, this black cable here doesn't look too good. Um, it was looking actually even worse. So I just had to do a temporary patch, get a clean connection, clean out the oil and um, I cleaned up all this oil and then I put in, redid, just added an extra bit of wire to it 
Just to do a temporary test and check that there is uh, power going to the start motor and see if we can start the car. So just out of interest, I phoned BMW to check the price of the start motor and it's actually 12,990 Rand. Even aftermarket ones are actually 4,500. So I really hope that this repair works. So let's try this again, second attempt. So key in the ignition. Let's check if we've got ignition still. Still have power coming. Put on the brake and let's see if it starts now. Dude! Well, the first thing I saw was actually uh, all these areas as soon as you start the car. So it looks like the traction control is not working and I see there's a 4x4 error as well. Um, so I googled that actually sometimes the um, steering angle sensor doesn't work when you've taken out the battery so, and the battery was dead here. So usually if you turn full lock to the left and to the right, this error sometimes goes away. Um, however, I tried this with this car, it didn't work. So next is just to test the gearbox of the car, just move it around to the first drive and see if that works. And actually see the smoking itself, see why the, the previous owner parked off this car and see if it's really that bad. And um, so this is, we're just doing our first drive in the driveway, um, turn it around. And when it's idling, it's not as, it's not so bad. It doesn't seem to be too bad. However, once you put it into a gear, um, either drive or reverse, you can see it's a lot of smoke. It's quite terrible. This would be quite embarrassing to be driving a car like this um, on the road. And it's obviously not good for the engine as well. There must be something wrong. Yeah, that's a lot of smoke. So some people might find it cool to be rolling coal, but that's definitely not for me. And I don't think that BMW should be doing that either. Also, it wasn't designed like that, so we definitely need to look at that and fix that issue. I think color smoke can give you a clue to what's wrong with the car. So uh, dark black smoke is usually from overfueling. And then if it's a bluish gray, that uh, means that there's oil in the combustion chamber and then if it's white or sweet smelling that's diff that's uh, coolant so with this car here the x5 it looks like it's probably a bit of a combination there's it's quite black though so it, first thing will be just to check for overfueling see why the car is actually pouring out diesel into the engine into the combustion chamber it's way too much 